very happy to meet you all in another session in anatomy and this is a very small session again on ligaments attached to the uterus and now when we expect questions we expect more picture questions right so you will be given picture questions like steps of surgery like steps of uh, say abdominal hysterectomy or steps of vaginal hysterectomy and they'll mark the ligaments and they'll be asking you what this ligament is or the question can come from any basic theory point connected to the ligament so before we go into the topic i'll draw a rough picture of all the ligaments attached to the uterus and tell you all the basic points regarding all these ligaments and then we will uh, try discussing the questions Fine. the first and foremost uh, ligament that is attached to the uterus we will talk with respect to ovary so now this is ovary we have a pair of ovaries and we will draw the lateral pelvic wall here for um, now this is a bone huh? this is a lateral pelvic wall and with regard to the lateral pelvic wall you should always remember that this position is constant what position the external os of the cervix is always at the level of ischial spines now this is regarded as a normal anatomical position of the uterus so the external loss is at the level of ischial spines and ischial spines in obstetrics you call it a zero station right now when the external loss descends below the level of ischial spines for example there is a uterine descent where this external loss is coming down below the level of these ischial spines then we call it as prolapse uterus so that is the basic definition of prolapse you all know prolapse is in fact a form of hernia yes so uterus is herniating from its normal uh, anatomical location so the normal anatomical location is in uh, such that the external loss corresponds to the ischial spines okay right. so now we have drawn the uh, what to call now this is the bony pelvis now this is the bone okay now we're talking about the ovary ovary is attached on one end to the uterine corno and other end ovary cannot just like that hang you know inside the pelvis so the other end is attached to the bone okay so how it is attached to the uterus it is attached to the uterus by the ovarian ligament so now this i'll share ovary is attached to the corno by ovarian ligament okay is that okay fine now how is this side of the ovary attached to the lateral pelvic wall now this side of the ovary is attached to the lateral pelvic wall by another ligament called infundibulo pelvic ligament now this is infundibulo pelvic ligament what is the other name for infundibulo pelvic ligament the other name is suspensory ligament of ovary suspensory ligament of ovary Ovary. so please now understand that in during a hysterectomy uh, we will uh, try with clumps so during a hysterectomy if you are going to retine the ovary that means you are not removing the ovary where are you supposed to apply your clamps you will apply your clamps here we will apply our clamps here is that right if you want to remove the ovary also then where you will up along with the uterus okay so along when you're doing hysterectomy along with the uterus if you want to remove the ovary then where you will apply a clamp you will apply a clamp here okay so in the exam i have seen picture questions like clamps applied on the ligament and they will ask you what that ligament is is that is that understandable okay now we are talking about what we are talking about structures at the uterine corner please remember that the anterior most structure in the uterine corno is basically the round ligament this green color i am drawing no? this is the round ligament for me to draw the round ligament in a two dimensional picture is very difficult but i'll explain as a course so you can follow and i'll show you with a real laparoscopy image is that is that fine okay so the round ligament starts at the uterine corno in fact the round ligament is the anterior most um a structure attached cornual structure uh, fine now the round ligament traverses for some distance and it i'll, I'll draw it in the opposite side hmm? okay so and then what happens it immediately enters the abdominal wall so in the abdominal wall you have the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring so round ligament enters the deep inguinal ring now round ligament is a part of the inguinal canal in females it comes out of the superficial inguinal ring now then it comes out of the superficial inguinal ring 
and round ligament is attached to the external genitalia round ligament is attached to the external genitalia that is it is attached to the mons pubis okay so that is the course of a round ligament the length of round ligament is around 10 centimeters is that fine and round ligament is comparable to what structure it's the remnant of jubernaculum it's comparable to jubernaculum testis okay so that is all about the round ligament so please remember that it is a content of the inguinal canal in females where is it is it attached the other end of the round ligament is attached to the external genitalia that is mons pubis okay so remember that so we have talked about round ligament we have talked about ovarian ligament and we have also talked about infundibular pelvic ligament is it fine so uh talking about the cornual structures what is in between these two we have the tubes i'll i'll, I'll show you with a better image in the laparoscopy image so a small mnemonic here i tell you rto huh? so you can remember like road traffic officer or something like that rto round ligament behind the round ligament you will have tubes and then you will have the ovarian ligament is that okay so from anterior to posterior so you'll have round ligament then you'll have tubes and then you will have ovarian ligament is that fine now now i'm going to draw another ligament so in fact, the name ligament is a misnomer here. Huh? It is, 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 is uh, say, sheets of peritoneum or just folds of peritoneum that uh, is expansive on either side of the uterus and connecting the lateral aspect of the uterus to the lateral pelvic wall. Okay. So now these ligaments are broader, right? So they are called broad ligament. Okay. So on either sides, you will have what? You will have broad ligament. And you all know broad ligament does not support the uterus in any way. Okay, this is broad ligament. So that is it. So broad ligament is just what two sheets of sheets of peritoneum on either side of the uterus. That's it. Now, now we are going to talk about the most important ligament. See, this is the most important ligament, and the name of the ligament itself is what? Important ligament. And the ligament name itself is what? Important ligament. That means what ligament? Cardinal. So we are going to talk about cardinal ligament. Okay. Now this is the cardinal ligament. Cardinal important. Cardinal ligament. What is the other name for cardinal ligament? Mechandrot's ligament. Mechandrot's ligament. It's also called uh, transverse cervical ligament because it is uh, extending transversely on either side of the cervix. So transverse cervical ligament, okay? Or you can also call call it bony's ligament. See how many names. The name of this ligament itself is important ligament. Now let me tell you why it is important ligament. Remember, this is that ligament keeps the external os of the cervix at the level of ischial springs. So what does it mean? Now this ligament is attached laterally to the cervix and it is attached tight to the bone. On the other end, it prevents uterine descent. That means this is the most important ligament which prevents a prolapse. Okay, so in the exam, they'll ask you a question, very often repeated question, ligament preventing prolapse. Is it broad ligament? No, no, not at all. Is it ovarian ligament? Is it infundibular pelvic ligament? Is it round ligament? No, it is McEndroth's ligament. If the question is asked in a different way like this, which ligament maintains the external loss at the level of fiscal spines, then also you say it's McEndroth's ligament. Now, is that okay? Now, if we take the cross section of the cervix, so please remember this is basic anatomy. The uterus is not uh, supported by strong ligaments. Because it has to expand during pregnancy. It comes up to the level of the zippy sternum, right? So it has to expand. So it's 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 definitely should not be surrounded by strong ligaments. No, no, uh, no ligament should hold it tight because it, it should be ready for expansion. Okay. But to prevent the uterus from descending down, the lower part of the uterus that is the cervix is held very tightly by a very important ligament, by a very strong ligament attached to the bone. And that is cardinal ligament. Now imagine the cervix is not only attached laterally to the bone, it is attached all around huh? 360 degree circumference. It is attached all around to the bone very tightly, preventing the prolapse. So now if you take that, this is the cervix. Imagine now this is the cervix. Fine. 
Now, this, this cervix is attached anteriorly to, we have this pubic symphysis, right? PS, pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, what we have? We have the sacrum. Laterally, what we have? We'll write this as lateral pelvic wall. Huh? I'll draw just only a small segment of the lateral pelvic wall. Okay. Now, we all know what attaches the cervix transversely or laterally to the lateral pelvic wall. We all know that it is McEntroth's ligament, right? So, we'll draw the McEntroth's ligament now. Now, this is the McEntroth's ligament or the transverse cervical ligament. Anteriorly, now the cervix is attached to the pubic symphysis by pubo-cervical ligament. We will name it, okay? So, pubo-cervical ligament. It's attached all around by strong ligaments. What is this ligament? Now, this is our cardinal ligament or McEntroth's ligament. Similarly, posteriorly also, it is surrounded by very strong ligaments, right? So, posteriorly, it is surrounded by what ligament now? Posteriorly, it is surrounded by what ligament which is a different color? Now, this ligament which is attached posteriorly, it's like a inverted D. Okay, you will have it like this, inverted D. Now, this ligament is uterosacral ligament. Instead of telling cervicosacral, they have named it uterosacral, not, not much difference. Okay, so now this is uterosacral ligament. Okay, now collectively the three ligaments, what three ligaments? Pubo-cervical, um, uh, cardinal lateral uh, transverse cervical and uterosacral. Now combined all the three are together called what? Trans triradiate ligaments. They are radiate no? in three different directions, anteriorly, posteriorly, laterally, keeping the cervix tight, keeping the external loss at the level of ischial spines, preventing a prolapse. And among all the three, they ask which is the most important ligament, strongest ligament, you will answer only cardinal ligament. Is that okay? Triradiate ligaments. Or you simply use a triradiate ligament. Okay, is that is that fine? Now, now, now this is this is the whole important uh, concept. Now let me go to actual pictures, laparoscopy pictures, and I'll tell you all the important facts. Now, this is all about round ligament. It is a homologue of Juman oculum testis. It travels in the inguinal ring. Yes, it gets attached to the skin and connective tissue of the mons pubis and labia majora. Yes, okay. Now, you can see from the corner, it goes through the, this is deep inguinal ring, this is superficial inguinal ring, it comes out and it gets attached to the mons pubis and labia majora. Okay. Small additional point about round ligament is that it is supplied by one small twig of artery called Samson's artery, which is basically an anastomotic vessel between the uterine artery and the ovarian artery. So, you all know where from the ovarian artery comes. Ovarian artery is a direct branch of abdominal iota. Iota. Now, it comes through the infundibular pelvic ligament. It supplies the ovary and then it supplies the rest of the tube and the corner. Where is the uterine artery coming from? Uterine artery is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac. So, you have common iliac, internal iliac. Okay, now this is common iliac. In the common iliac, we have internal iliac and external iliac. And the external iliac continues as femoral. Okay, so I will draw this. Now, this is common iliac. Common iliac divides into internal iliac and external iliac. In the internal iliac, you have an anterior division and a posterior division. Now, this uterine artery is a branch of the anterior division of internal iliac. Now, this ovarian artery and the uterine artery anastomosis at the level of the uterine corno. And we have a small twig of artery which connects the uterine artery and the ovarian artery, which is Samson's artery, which supplies the round ligament. Okay. So, Samson's artery is artery to round ligament. Samson's artery is artery to round ligament. Is artery to round ligament. Is that okay? okay? So that is all. Okay. So let us name. So you will have questions in the exam like this. Some number given like this, which will mark the ligaments, and they will ask you all the name of the ligaments. Now this is the, this is a typical laparoscopy view. We are seeing the fundus of the uterus. Now this is anterior, and then this is posterior. So, anterior to posterior, the uterine structures are, now this is 
this structure i told you r t o right so you can imagine like this now this is round ligament and you can see the round ligament going like this and entering the abdominal wall that is it is going into the what deep inguinal ring you have the tube here and how are tubes identified tubes are identified mainly with the fimbria is that is that right now these are the tubes okay then behind the tubes now you have the ovarian ligament which connects the corno with the ovary you can see the pearly white almond shaped structure that is ovary and on the other side this ovary is connected to the lateral pelvic wall by infundibular pelvic ligament so this is infundibular pelvic ligament so on the opposite side i think i need not explain and these and, and this is what this broad sheet now this is broad ligament okay now let's go to the orientation posteriorly whenever you see this inverted v shaped ligament always remember now this is the utrosacral ligament you will not be able to see that mechanrods pubo cervical and all here because only with the dissection you will be able to see all those okay but uterosacral ligament it's it's easily seen inverted v shaped so what is inside that v you see the deepest or do you see the most dependent part of a female pelvis now that is the pouch of douglas now this is the pouch of douglas pouch of douglas is also called recto uterine pouch or recto vaginal pouch or sometimes recto vaginal septum is another name given for this recto uterine pouch and as you can see you can see the intestinal loops going and lying inside the recto uterine pouch now if this recto uterine pouch descends down as prolapse now it becomes endocele okay the content may be small intestine or content may be large intestine now if you are going to name all this one fundus two round ligament three ovarian ligament four uterosacral ligament five they have marked ovary Six, it's IP ligament. Okay, so you will be given any question like this. Now this is a real um, a laparoscopy picture. I have one or two pictures, and now this is we we will just do the same. Now this is uterus, fundus. Now this is anterior. This is posterior. Fine, you see the bladder here. You can see the bladder here. Anterior relation to the uterus. You can see the pouch of Douglas and the and the inverted V shaped infundibular pelvic ligament. Early white structure. See the ovary. You are seeing the developing follicle on the ovary here. And now this is the round ligament. Round ligament. You are seeing the tubes, and you are also seeing the fimbria here. Now this structure is the ovarian ligament, and the opposite side you have the infundibular pelvic ligament. So that is the orientation you should have to understand questions. Is that okay? Right. Now you see here anatomy is slightly distorted. Okay, so tubes on the ovary, maybe huh? you will not. You will, you can see this. This is the uterosacral ligament. You will see slight changes in the anatomy. This picture I have mainly made to show you the Meckenrodt's ligament. Now this is the Meckenrodt's ligament. Here one important thing that I want to tell you in the Meckenrodt's ligament is that you have a tunnel. For the ureter also travels through the Meckenrodt's ligament, and that tunnel in the Meckenrodt's ligament through which the ureter passes is ureteric tunnel, also called tunnel of Verdin. Tunnel of Verdin. I'll be talking more about the course of the ureter in coming classes. We'll be talking about relations of the ureter to the uterine artery. What we call here this relation is water under the bridge. No, now this relation is water under the bridge. Under the bridge, when you take the external loss two centimeter above the external loss and two centimeter lateral to the external loss, we see the ureter and the uterine artery crosses. What is anterior? What is posterior? You can easily remember by this water under the bridge. Water means ureter, urine. So urine is under the bridge that is uh, uterine artery. So uterine artery is in front and behind the uterine artery posteriorly you have this water. Okay, so water is under the bridge, and these this ureter will travel through a tunnel in the in in the Meckenrodt's uh, ligament, and that is called tunnel of Verdin. And you also have nerve plexus, uh, nerves of the inferior hypogastric plexus in the Meckenrodt's ligament, which is called Frankenhauser plexus. So that is all, and I think um, we can end this by looking at the questions. Okay. So in this picture shown, I have three questions in order, and all the three pictures are steps of a hysterectomy. Is that is that okay? Steps of hysterectomy. I think we'll go to this original picture first. What we have drawn, 
and maybe I'll explain to you the steps of hysterectomy. So if it's an abdominal hysterectomy, where are we going to place our clamps? We'll take our clamp. If I feel I'm not, I don't want to remove the ovary, then first, my first clamp will be on the round ligament. So I will remo remove the tube totally. Then another clamp on the ovarian ligament, clamp the broad ligament, also clamp the mechanrods ligament. Now this is done on both the sides. Here we need to, when we clamp the mechanrods ligament, just above we will have the uterine artery. So clamp the uterine artery carefully and then the mechanrods ligament. If you want to remove the ovary, I'll be applying my clamps on the infundibular pelvic ligament. So in the picture shown, this is the step, steps of hysterectomy. The clamp is applied on what ligament? So here this is the clamp. Okay, we'll shade the clamp now. Now this is the clamp. Now this is the, this is the clamp, and okay. So here where it is placed. Now this is placed on the transverse cervical ligament or the mechanrods ligament. Okay. Again, same a similar question. Clamps shown are applied on which ligament? So this is very simple. They are asking about this clamp which is uh, placed here. Now, the, this, the, this is a broader lig ligament. Now, this is the this is the ovary. Now, ovary is connected here. How? The ovarian ligament. And ovary is connected laterally by what ligament? Infundibular pelvic ligament. So, here clamps are placed on the infundibular pelvic ligament. So, the last question, ligament that is marked by arrow. So, please mark, see this. Look at this picture carefully. The, the two clamps are applied, but here one ligament which is already cut. Uh, they have asked. Now, this is the anti remote structure of the corno. So, the answer for this question is round ligament. So, please be very careful in answering. Most often, you get picture questions from this ligaments of uh, ligaments attached to the uterus. So, to sum up, we have talked about round ligament, ovarian ligament, infundibular pelvic ligament, broad ligament, megantrots ligament, tubo cervical ligament, uterosacral ligament. Thank you all for your patient listening. Best training, peaceful environment, PG medical entrance exam preparation were my expectations. I got them at Speed Medical Village in Kanchipuram. Today, I am a PG topper. Speed Medical Village, a unique eco-friendly campus dedicated for PG preparation. Speed Medical Institute, a complete solution for medical education.